Are there any scientific studies showing anything that clearly prevents Alzheimer's and dementia? There are many studies that have shown that uh, lifestyle affects uh, prevalence and, and proclivity for Alzheimer's. There are no drug studies, none, that have shown that they've actually even slowed down the disease, none. As far as data for nutrition is concerned, there's plenty of data to show that you know a diet that is predominantly plant-based reduces the risk of Alzheimer's disease significantly. One of the studies that uh, came out a couple of years ago from Rush University showed that um, adherence to a MIND diet, a MIND diet is a hybrid of a Mediterranean diet and a diet low in sodium, the DASH diet. But when you look at the scoring system, it's high in vegetables, fruits, beans, whole grains, nuts and seeds, and low in animal products and animal saturated fats and processed foods, obviously. By adhering to that diet, people were able to reduce their risk uh, for Alzheimer's disease by 53%. 53%. What medication does that? We don't have any. And even moderate adherence to that diet actually reduced the risk of Alzheimer's disease by 35%. That was just diet alone, not even including exercise or mental stimulation or anything of that nature. Um, and, and you know, the data goes on. Back in 1993, Dr. Paul Guillaume from Loma Linda University was interested to see the incidence and prevalence of Alzheimer's disease in the Adventist community. Now, Adventists are you know, half vegetarian, half non-vegetarian, so he wanted to see what was the effect of diet on the development of Alzheimer's. And he found out that people who were non-vegetarians, who were omnivores, actually had twice the risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. And these were individuals who ate consumed meats and poultry, including fish as well, while vegetarians had lower incidence. Um, the same thing in Kaiser Permanente in Northern California study about you know, 10,000 individuals followed for many years. They found out that when people have high cholesterol during their midlife, their chances of Alzheimer's disease increased by 57%. And even if they had moderately high cholesterol levels during midlife, their chances increased by 23%. And the same thing goes in uh, um, Columbia University. They found out that in the Northern Manhattan study, People who consumed a plant-based diet significantly reduced their chances of memory decline. Um, so you see these studies for nutrition. Let's take exercise, for example. Uh, there was a study, a meta-analysis study, which looks at data from multiple studies put together. Thousands of individuals you know, followed many, many years. They found out that uh, moderate to strenuous activity, you know, something that makes you break a sweat and have a difficult time finishing a sentence, reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease by 38%. Now these numbers are incredible. I mean, for diet, look at that, you know, 53%. For exercise, 38%. You put those together and you do that in life. I mean, obviously the numbers don't add up. It's not, it ends up being more than 100%, but that's statistics, it doesn't work that way. But these are incredibly strong evidence that shows us that if you live a certain lifestyle, you're bound to reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease. Um, we also know a lot about stress and how stress affects the brain. Uh, there have been multiple studies done on what actually happens when people are stressed out. And when we talk about stress, it's the daily worries, the little worries that kind of just eat at you. And that causes the release of uh, chemicals and hormones in our bodies like cortisol and adrenaline that literally shrink the brain and it doesn't allow you to consolidate memory. It doesn't allow the brain to grow and thrive. It actually stops from uh, the formation of long-term memory from all the information that you get on a daily basis. Um, same thing in uh, um, optimization of cognitive activity. Dean and his colleagues actually published a paper and they looked at brain games and cognitive activity and how it reduces the risk of cognitive impairment. And they found out that when people focus on their weaknesses, say for example, not being able to focus on something or not being able to remember short-term uh, uh, items, you know, their recall is affected. If they practice towards making those better, you actually reverse that damage in your brain and you get a better brain. So there's no shortage of data. There's a lot of data that we can prevent Alzheimer's disease. What do you think of the likelihood of a drug becoming available that could stop or reverse the progression of Alzheimer's or dementia? Um, we don't think that there will be a drug that will actually uh, reverse the disease. Reverse means that the damage that's been done is actually then corrected. 
there might be a drug that slows down the progression. And there might be a combination of drugs that actually stop the progression altogether. But reversing implies that at the same time that it stopped that, it helped regrow the brain. That's not going to happen. Because by the time that Alzheimer's has manifested, significant damage will have been done. We're talking about amyloid accumulation, vascular disease, neuronal loss. So let's say that you find a drug that stops that. Will it also at the same time help regrowth? No. But that in itself is actually profound. If and when they do this, where they in a combination drug, and I don't think it's going to be one drug, they're able to stop the disease from progressing. That's profound in itself because then you can give lifestyle the chance to regrow the brain or at least the connections of the brain. So I think there's hope. It's not in the near horizon, but there will be definitely something in the near future, in the future. And in the meantime, what we have to do is institute lifestyle changes. Because even when there's stoppage of the disease, let's say in five to 10 years, you still need lifestyle to regrow. So why not institute it now? I think it's important for people to understand that Alzheimer's is not one disease. There are multiple pathways to Alzheimer's disease. And unfortunately at NIH and other uh, you know, uh, research institutes, the focus has been on a particular protein or a particular molecule, and that's not what happens. It's a very complex disease, and the way to approach its prevention also has to be multifaceted and complex. And right now, prevention is the only treatment. What do you think of the likelihood that we'll discover a natural remedy or lifestyle choice being able to stop or reverse the progression of Alzheimer's or dementia? I would say 100%. And I would say we have it now. And that's lifestyle intervention through a whole food plant-based diet, exercise, stress management, good sleep hygiene, and mental activity, 100%. We have it now. We just have to accept it at a population level. Why is this not being promulgated and spread? Because there's no money to be made, nothing to be sold, nothing to be bought. And it's not a controversy. It's not a, a conspiracy. It's just that even us as patients, as consumers, we love that one pill, one vitamin, one protocol, one plan. Here's the plan. Go home, buy more vegetables, less meat and sugar. Go home and exercise in your living room. Get a recumbent bike and connect it to your TV so the TV is not working unless the bike is moving. Go home and identify on a whiteboard what your good stresses are, learning a new musical instrument, what your good stresses are, learning to lead a charitable organization. And that kind of stress actually grows the brain. And identify the bad stresses, the job repetitive that you're doing at work, reduce it and make it more, 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 more varied. Sleep, sleep better. You know, identify your bedroom as a place of, as a sanctuary. Make it a spa. Sleep hygiene. And then get socially and mentally involved in the community. Learn a musical instrument. Go get a group and play cards with them. By the way, eating healthy food, a, a snack. You know, start, uh, you know, chatter and you know, ripping on each other and, and, you know, all kinds of stuff because that takes mental activity. <clears throat> That's the kind of stuff that will actually reverse, prevent brain diseases. Brain is a living machine, the kinds of which we will not see in a while. We keep hearing about AI this and AI that. The brain is 87 billion neurons, one quadrillion connections, one times 10 to the 50th power and we're using it at 1% efficiency. You know, when they say that we only use 10% of the brain, no, <clears throat> we're using 100% of the brain, but at 1% efficiency. Where repeated cycles, repeat habits, even our thoughts are habit loops. We keep rerunning the same habit loop of thought. We think we're thinking, <clears throat> we're running the same loop. Why? Because it's high energy to go in the cortex, in the higher brain, thinking. And brain doesn't want to spend that much energy. Well, evolutionarily. But it actually grows the brain when you go outside of the habit loop. And that is done. Not in a fancy spa in Arizona. It's done in your living room and your kitchen. Ironically, even with that passion, even with that data, 
We said this to the people, and I know that they're incredulous because we've been raised in a pill society. If it doesn't come in a pill, <clears throat> it can't be working. It's not science. And they will accept pseudoscience with these vitamins and blue jellyfish things and all this stuff instead of real, real life science, which is lifestyle science, as long as it's in a pill. Um, we have to change that mentality. We have to change that mentality because the consequence is dire. This tsunami of Alzheimer's or dementia in general is going to take the healthcare system. Right now, it's the costliest disease of them all. $259 billion direct cost, $240 billion indirect cost, $500 billion altogether, more than. Let's put that in comparison. The second costliest disease is heart disease at $120 billion. Third costliest is all cancers at $70 billion. $500 billion, $70 billion. And that number is going to go to $3 trillion by 2050, 2040 actually, if we don't do something about it. And it's not going to be in a pill. It's going to be in our communities.